Okay. Is a regular regular AC compressor off of a pretty typical 97 through 2006 Jeep Wrangler. It's a Sandin model 709 and what I like about them is they're easy to convert, pretty simple to do, and they're very readily available. They come in usually two styles. Uh, the Cherokees from what I mostly see are the rear exit like this and then you've got your TJ's where they exit off the top here. Uh, either style works fine so if you're looking to build an onboard air system this is a great start it's something you've already got most of us and if not they're readily available uh, pretty simple to do take the back half off here this is the head take this off 13 millimeter screw bolts now this one here I've had a part already I just found this sitting on my on my shelf over here so I figured I'd show you all how to do it because onboard air on the trail is very helpful either if sometimes if you rip a bead off or if you air down want to air back up at the end of the day definitely beats an electric compressor which uh, we will come to another point here if you look on the top of this unit you'll see a 709 here what that stands for is seven cylinders nine CFM per thousand RPMs so Every 1,000 RPMs, this thing's delivering 9 CFM of air. That's pretty healthy. That's comparable to a stand-up compressor, a pretty healthy shop compressor. Now, when you take these bolts out, what you're going to find under here is basically just a check valve and a couple of gaskets. There's only one small reason we're taking this off. Two reasons, actually. Most of it is just to clean the Freon out. But as I've said, I've done this before, and we've got to make a small change underneath the head here. These are normally lubricated through the oil in the Freon. And what that means is the whole container, the whole vessel is under pressure. So what we want to do, here's your check valve setup. These gaskets normally okay. Um, you could change them if you like. It's not going to hurt anything, but if we're just compressing air with it, it's not a big deal. If they leak a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to have any problems. If it's leaking Freon, if you're using it in a high pressure system such as an AC system, you're going to want to change these gaskets every time you take it apart. Otherwise, I've done plenty of these with reusing the old gaskets. Never had any issues or anything through them. Here's your check valve set up here. You can see it sucks through. And that's another thing, suction discharge it sucks through the outside here sucks the air through the holes down into these cylinders and then it compresses it back up and it takes it out through the center here out through the discharge hole so we'll set this off to the side so the only thing we're gonna do here the only thing that really needs done on this side this hole here allows lubricant allows oil from the Freon to flow through into the body and that lubricates the bearings it lubricates the plate and everything underneath here and keeps it running smoothly that's why there's oil in your Freon so basically what we need to do with this is just block it off somehow normally what I use is a quarter by 20 grub screw it's a tapered hole I've had people do it where they just thread the grub screw down into the aluminum all you're really trying to do is in the end keep the grease from the back end from getting into your cylinder head here and getting into your air tank. Uh, quarter by tiny tap. Take it through again. It's this hole here. It's pretty much the only hole in the back side here. You got your two locator dowels, your cylinder head bolt downs, and this is for the wobble plate underneath. We'll get into that later. Now, I know there's shavings probably going down in here. It's aluminum. It's soft. And in our next step, you'll see why it's not that huge of a deal at the minute, because we're going to clean this whole back side out underneath here. Just run that down in there a little bit. It's a tapered hole. So, like I said, we're just basically trying to keep the grease separate from the compressor head. A little bit of that. Run a little brake cleaner down in there. Wipe that out, let it dry.
again for what this takes to do it's a very simple conversion and obviously the ability to excuse me for a second obviously the ability to air up your tires and if you need do lose a bead to see it seat the bead this thing is very powerful 9 CFM that'll run an impact that'll run air tools if you need them put a little bit of sealant on there again we're not looking for much just to keep the grease and the head side separate the whole body is typically under pressure from the AC system which is if you're familiar with air conditioning systems is usually upwards of 300 pounds so which brings me to my next point when you do this it is absolutely imperative that you run a safety blow off switch with this you're talking something here a compressor that is capable of building 300 pounds of pressure there are no over-the-shelf pipes that you're gonna get at your local hardware store that are capable of holding that kind of pressure so a good blow-off valve or safety blow-off switch and an on-off switch is imperative here uh, so that's that's about it for this we're done with the head you can take your check valve again you'll see the gaskets if you didn't take this apart there's no reason to and you got your two dowel pins dowel pins go here underneath set that back on top of there that fell apart there you go there you don't need any sealer or anything on these gaskets are pretty well sealed um, one more thing I like to do on these others on these this style the hole for the discharge here you can see through there is rather small feel like that's a big restriction in the system uh, regular 3 8 bit run it down in through there I'll do that now really opens it up lets it flow a little better quite a bit you can see through there let a little more air come through and also this is going to keep the air cooler because it's not going to be working so hard to come through the opening make sure all your shavings are out of there pretty simple to do line your locating pins back up set the head on there and then bolt it back down pretty simple straightforward especially on this end. On the other end it gets a little more complicated. You're going to need a good high pressure grease. I've used over the years more types than you can imagine. I've got some of these things that are going on 10 years old through my friends, guys I wheel with, and they're all going great. It's not something you use a lot, but when you do use it, it's you're very grateful to have it. I know a lot of guys that have the electric compressors that have everybody's been waiting in line just to use this because it is so much faster the major restriction here is your tire valve at this point I can fill up a 35 inch tire from flat I've taken the core out from flat all the way up to the street pressure about 33 pounds in just over a minute a minute and, I think it was a minute and eight seconds or something like that so that's the substantial amount of air put this back in torque these down again you don't want to crank on these it's just going into an aluminum housing and you're not really trying to be he-man here through check them again just to make sure everything's snug okay now on the front side you have eight 10 millimeter bolts that need to come out this one sounds like a bearing is going bad in it but we can put a new clutch on it later this is your clutch plug 
you're going to want to wire this into just a hot switch, run 12 volts to it, turn it off and on. I suggest running it through an ignition switch, that way you don't drain your battery. 10 millimeter. Now there's always two of these bolts that don't come all the way out. They just sit behind, the, I don't know if the diameter is a little bit closer, they just sit behind the pulley here. And that's fine. They can stay in there, they've never had a problem with them. Now normally when you take this apart, it's going to be full of oil and Freon left over from the, from the air conditioning system. But that's a good thing. Open it up. Make sure it's no, not all gelled up inside there. I've had some of the older ones come in and they were, the oil was gelled up inside there, crystallized. Get, you want to make sure you want to get that all out of there as best you can good brake parts cleaner sprayed in there when you take this apart there's one of the screws that won't come out I think the diameter of these whole two holes are closer than these and it just won't won't let it come out on any of them but that's fine we don't you don't need to take the clutch apart for any reason A lot of people want to say you need a York air compressor, big giant York system. Uh, I've just found that's not true. Like I said, I've been running this on my Jeep personally for well over 10 years. The only reason I switched it was because I swapped out the 2.5 for a 318. And actually a buddy of mine is still running that air compressor to this day. So it's been, it's been in use for some years now. No problem. I say it doesn't run all the time just when you're airing up, so it's really not that high of a stress environment. Now when you take this off, there's going to be a plate bearing. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but there is a bearing in here you need to watch. It's going to come out with this this is called a wobble plate setup. It's pretty neat if you are not familiar with it. I suggest taking a look into it. There's the gasket. Don't lose that. That's important. That seals this side. So what happens is as this turns it moves the cylinders in here up and down. There's the bearing I was speaking of. And there's also two wear plates, one on this side and one on this side. And this one here, you need to pay attention when you put it together. There's two ears on it that locate it in the grooves here on the wobble plate side to keep it from wearing out. So you need to make sure those are located in there. Just a good heavy coat of grease keeps everything in position where it needs to be when you put it back together. You can see there's shavings in here from where we drilled the hole. Tapped the hole, I'm sorry. And here's our plate. There's no reason to go any further than this. Uh, you can take this apart. It's not that difficult to put back together. There's a gear on the back side of this plate, a locator gear in the bottom that's keyed into the housing, a ball that this wobbles on, and obviously your connecting rods and your little pistons. It's fairly easy to put back together. It's just time consuming lining up seven cylinders with seven bores and dropping them down into there. That's really the only big deal. But you can see in here, we've got our shavings from when we tapped our hole. 
other than that it's pretty clean like I said I had to take this one apart and free it up it was just an off-the-shelf unit I'm just using it for demonstrations so get your brake cleaner out hose out this will be full of Freon and oil from the Freon from the AC system clean it out real good because you're gonna need to replace it with the quality grease and I've seen a lot of them where it just it never did any damage but it just doesn't mix properly and you end up with sludge in there and you have to take it back apart and redo it anyway so make sure it's good and clean I'm gonna spray this out and I'll be right back okay now you wanna let that dry clean it out your biggest thing like I said is just this is this needs to be pretty liberally lubricated this is what's going to lubricate this bearing and your wobble plate and all your pistons from now on instead of the oil from that's included in the Freon so you need to make sure you put a good amount in there you don't want to overpack it because then it'll just put more drag and more wear on it but like I said for as much as these get used it's not something you're going to use every day if you do more power to you so come in here make sure this is dried out I just use good NLG quality grease here coastal you can get this at your local any local parts house will have this. I've been using it for a couple of years now. It's always treated me good. I mean, it's nothing special. Anything, anything will work. Take this. Oh, we need our plate. Put our wear plate on there. Smear some grease around in there. This is going to fly off and basically just end up in the bottom here, but as it heats up, it'll pick it back up and slosh it around so that's what you're looking for put that in there I like to coat the bearing with it make sure it gets in there good like I said this is supposed to have an oil in it but I've been using like I said I've been using grease for years it does very well and I have not had a failure yet knock on wood use a lot of grease in there just to hold everything in place and also this wear plate in here to hold that in but also there's a bearing down inside here and what I like to do is just try and smear some grease down inside of that down in the cavity there to fill it up Make sure it turns smoothly. This again, very important. Good lava grease on that. Keep it from falling out. fill up the little crevices in here just another place to hold it okay now what you want to do put this back the way it came apart you didn't mess with anything here it's not that important usually typically your 709 is on the top and your wires come out on this side going back towards the engine again it's not important this head only goes on I'm sorry the drive system only goes on two ways either the wire this way or the wire this way typically the wire is on the inside so put that back in the way it came out pay attention you don't want to, you want to make sure you got a lot of grease on this so this washer doesn't fall out everything here is in good shape put this in let it spin freely oh you know what almost forgot my gasket very important there is going to be leakage back through here 
and typically you don't want this to fill up with dirt or anything either, either way so this will keep the pressure in Again, a little bit of grease does a good job at holding the gasket in place. Normally the best idea is to hold it from the plate, that way the bearing, the wobble plate can spin. Pay attention as you drop it down in there, try and line up the slants. And set it down on top. It's going to want to move around on you, you're going to have to be careful, hold it into place, you don't want to knock that wear plate off. As long as you used a good amount of grease and you don't knock it around, they usually don't. Now when you do this, you don't want to use the bolts to pull it down. So if you do that, obviously something inside is wrong. It should go down pretty finger tight. Okay, now go ahead, work your way around, slowly just start snugging them down. There is a spring down there that you're going to need to compress underneath the wobble plate. It's pretty simple to do. I say just turn here, turn there, walk your way around them, make sure nothing, it shouldn't take an extreme amount of force to bring this down to seat. The threads on this one are a little messed up, so... Okay, come back around here, get this side. Got a small gap there, about an eighth inch, if that, sixteenth maybe. And that's all you're really going to do, just snug it down, compress the spring underneath the wobble plate for the pistons. That's what keeps, uh, keeps everything together, so there's no play in the system. And then on a second round around, go ahead and tighten them down. And that's, that's really all there is to it. This is a very simple setup to make. It's dead reliable. I say I've had mine. Oh, it, it's it's still running. I know it's still running. It's been 10 years now, and I had it running personally for eight until I swapped out the 2.5 for a 3.18 in mine, and even now, the one that's on it, I took the air conditioning off the factory Dodge Ram. It's the same basic setup as this. It's just a little shorter. The second bolt holes here are actually in the cover, and it's only five cylinders. It's a 507, I believe, so 7 CFM. It's a little slower. It is a little bit noticeably slower filling up a tire, but it's still, still priceless when you're out on the trailhead. 
Again, this is an air conditioning compressor. It is essentially nothing more than a compressor. However, it is capable of 350 pounds of pressure. You need to be very careful with that. You don't want anyone getting hurt. Make sure you use a blow-off valve. Uh, maximum rated I would go is 125. That's pretty much mm, right on the borderline of what everything's rated for. Any of your power tools, etc., are rated for 100 PSI. On-off switch, a good quality on-off switch in line. You basically just run your wire from your switch through the on-off switch in, that's in line with the tankers wherever in your plumbing and then run it to this wire here, 12 volts DC is all you need. So now, you got these all snugged up. What you wanna do, the center plate here, put your hand on it, make sure everything spins smoothly, which it does no noises, everything's in good shape, not locking up, means you did everything right. Go ahead, install it on your Jeep. You need a filter on this end, on the suction end, and you need to plumb this into a tank with the pressure over relief switch and an on off switch for your, usually when I put them in 95 on, 120 off. That way you got a five PSI give or take between the off switch and your blow off valve and it'll automatically turn off and on. You don't have to worry about anything. When it runs low, it'll pump back up, fill your tire up, run an air tool. Again, a tank is, it's not necessary, but it's, uh, it's a good investment. Find somewhere to put a tank, a gallon, a gallon and a half, if you can come up with it. It's a good place to, the more tank you have, the less this is gonna run. If you have a, if it's an option, if you have a factory Jeep, a factory condenser in front of the radiator, it's a good idea to run it from this through that condenser and then into your tank. It cools the air down, makes it denser, which we're not really worried about here with all this, but it takes a lot of the heat out. And uh, what happens there is if you're running this a lot, and I've seen this happen, people using this to fill up air mattresses, this is, a, this is pressure, not volume. Uh, vacuum cleaner, the exhaust of a vacuum cleaner would be volume, not pressure. So what happens is the air gets really hot coming out of here, and if you use regular air brake line, which is what a lot of the, well, a lot of them I do, a lot of these that I do, I use regular air brake line. You can get it a, usually a truck stop or a truck supply place. You can find it online wherever you want. <clears throat> That'll melt under high temperature, and this will make the air hot enough when it comes out of here to melt that air line, and that's not what you want. That gives you a hole in your line and causes another issue if you don't have something to fix it your compressor is pretty much dead in the water so running it through a factory ac condenser first would take the temperature down quite a bit and probably save your airlines all right so that's that hope everybody enjoyed that uh next time i'd like to go over how to make a welder out of an ac delco cs 144 alternator Here's a setup I have sitting around. Uh, we'll go over how to make this. Ground, hot wire, 12 volts to it. Again, fairly simple, dead reliable, capable of 144 amps. Um, like, subscribe. I'm not trying to get famous on this, but I am trying to help people with the knowledge that I have. So if you're interested, I'd appreciate it. Thank you.